teacher talk at sports what does we do how we live and we live in an analytically driven sports world and one of the analytics that is used in baseball sometimes to drive players hall of fame cases is war wins above replacement um, so for this video i'm going to take a look at baseball reference war uh, there also is a Fangraphs war, but we're looking at baseball reference. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the 10 best wars in MLB history for players not currently in the Hall of Fame. But I am excluding those that haven't gotten in because of PED allegations or suspensions, perhaps gambling issues, Pete Rose, uh, those that are still active, uh, those that uh, are retired but haven't aren't eligible yet to be voted on, and those still be still on the BBWAA ballot. So I'll name them really quick. Barry Bonds, 162.8. Roger Clemens, 139.2. Alex Rodriguez, 117.7. Albert Pujols, 101.6. Adrian Beltre, 93.5. Mike Trout, 82.4. Pete Rose, 79.6. Justin Verlander, 77.6. Zach Greinke, 76.5. Clayton Kershaw, 75.9. Rafael Palmeiro, 71.9. Max Scherzer, 71.7. Carlos Beltran, 70.1. Scott Rowland, 70.1. Manny Ramirez, 69.3. And Robinson Cano, 68.1. But let's take a look at the 10 best wars otherwise for players not in the Hall of Fame. I'll go in descending order. Starting at 10th with Dwight Evans, 67.2 career war. Evans played a total of 20 years. His first 19 with the Red Sox was named an all-star three times. Was an eight-time gold glover in right field. Also won two silver sluggers. Hit 385 career homers. And as a 127 OPS plus. Ninth, Kevin Brown, 67.8. Brown pitched a parts of 19, season, 19 seasons, winning 211 games and finishing with a 3.28 ERA. The six time All Star won a World Series with the Marlins in 1997, led the NL in ERA in 1996 and 2000. Eighth, Greg Nettles, the longtime third baseman. Uh, most of it with the half of his career, 11 or 22 seasons with the Yankees, 68.0 war, six-time All-Star, won two World Series, a two-time Gold Glove, and ALCS MVP. Nettles, for his career, hit 390 homers, including a league-leading 32 in 1976, while driving in 1,314 runs. Seventh, we got the great speedster Kenny Lofton, 68.4. Uh, Lofton was a six-time All-Star and a four-time Gold Glover in center field. Played 17 seasons in the big leagues, batting 299 with a 794 OPS. Uh, wasn't much of a power hitter, 130 homers, but did hit. Excuse me, did steal 622 bases, including leading the AL five straight seasons from 1992 to 1996. Sixth, we got starting pitcher Rick Russell. Uh, Russell was a three-time All-Star and a two-time Gold Glove during his 19 seasons in the big leagues. Went 214 and 191 with a 3.37 ERA. Uh, Russell twice finished third. In NL Cy Young voting and won 20 games in 1977. Fifth, we got one of the great defensive, mostly second baseman, Bobby Grish, 71.1 war. A six-time All-Star member of the 1970 Orioles team that won the World Series. Also won four gold gloves in his career. Grish had four top 14 fin AL uh, MVP finishes in his career, uh, led the AL with 22 homers in the shortened season, uh, had 22 homers in 1981, uh, altogether hit 224 homers in his career, uh, and had a 125 OPS plus. Fourth, we got Sweet Lou, Lou Whitaker, second baseman, um, had a 75, has a 75.1 war. Uh, he was the 1978 AL Rookie of the Year, five-time All-Star member of the 1984 Tigers team that won the World Series, three-time Gold Glover, four-time Silver Slugger. Uh, Whitaker made five straight All-Star teams from 83 to 87 for his career, hit 244 homers, drove in 1,084 runs, 
had more walks than strikeouts in his career, 1,386 runs scored, and a 789 OPS for 117 OPS+. plus. Uh, many expect him to get in along with Alan Trammell. Alan Trammell has gotten in. Lou Whitaker is still waiting. Third, we're going to go way back for Bill Dolan. Uh, Dolan has a 75.2 war. Started his career in 1891, playing until 1911 in his 21 seasons. Uh, Dolan hit 272 with 2,461 hits. Uh, 1,234 RBIs, 1,590 runs scored, and 548 stolen bases. Dolan led the NL with 80 RBIs in 1904. Had a total of 163 triples as well, including six his first six seasons reaching double-digit total. Second, let's go even further back to Jim McCormick, 76.2. War in his career. I remember his first start in 1878. All right, I'm just kidding. But in 10 seasons, that 76.2 war, pretty impressive. 265 and 214 record, 2.43 ERA. Twice led the league in wins. Twice led the league in ERA in his career. Uh, Threw an incredible 466 complete games in his 485 starts. Um... Also had 1,704 strikeouts in his career and a 1.13 whip. And the top war goes to Kurt Schilling, 79.5, six-time All-Star, three-time World Series winner, World Series MVP, NLCS MVP. Um, A lot of you know why Kurt Schilling hasn't been inducted to the Hall of Fame. Uh, He's done a lot of things um, on social media, said some controversial things, but if we only go by his play in the field, he absolutely deserves to be in. 216 and 146 record, 3.46 ERA, three times finished as the runner-up for the Cy Young in his league, twice led the league in whip, um, twice led the league in wins, and if you look at his postseason, in his career, 11-2 and two with a 2.22 Excuse me, 2.23 ERA and 19 starts. Kurt Schilling definitely should be in the Hall of Fame. So which of these guys do you think is the biggest snub from the Hall of Fame? Who would you like to see eventually get in to Cooperstown? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe. Like the video, share the video, hit the bell for notifications. I'm out.